we have bought in so thoroughly to the notion of a hierarchy of information and a declension of truth from experts, whether they be politicians, priests, or scientists, that we have devalued ourselves as the primary instruments of our knowing. And this is why I think, among other reasons, why uh, psychedelics are so repressed, why it is so important to society to keep them out of the hands not only of children and high schoolers and uh, hedonistic uh, experimentalists, but to keep them out of the hands of research psychologists, pharmacologists, and physiologists as well, because uh, fully appreciated, they will explode the Newtonian, Einsteinian universe the way a stick of dynamite explodes a rotten apple. And in the process, the hierarchies of paternalism, scientism, and reductionism will just be completely swept away. And this is all going to happen, God willing, in our lifetimes. Uh, my faith is that if it doesn't happen, then the cultural momentum toward a lethal conclusion will continue unto the ultimate catastrophe. And so that's why I am willing to address groups like this and seek to inspire psychologists and chemists and students of anthropology and culture to examine this because I think we have wandered far from our birthright and trivialized uh, the mystery of being in the process. And to recoup that mistake, we are going to have to become as little children in the face of the shamanic phenomenon and investigate it intellectually, experientially, linguistically, individually, and collectively. Only in that way will we be able to rescue the enterprise from its momentum toward catastrophe. Let's not forget that each one of us is here in this room because, what, a thousand or ten thousand generations of thinking beings did not drop the ball. However tough <laughs> it was, nine times the glaciers have ground south from the poles in the last 150 years, 150,000 years. Nine times they have retreated. This planet has witnessed all kinds of catastrophes and, uh, and uh, cemetery breaks and uh, still the trust, the implicit trust, that the environment must have in us as the catalytic species, and we are the catalytic species. Everyone is worried about the impact of, of uh, humankind on this planet. Well, let me tell you, before the pyramids ever rose, the impact of human beings on this planet was staggering. The CO2 level had been affected. The grasslands had been created. The great mammals had become extinct. All of this is tolerated because we are the prodigal sons. We are uh, the pride of the planetary parent because we are the omni-adaptable catalytic species that if able to carry out the program which consciousness endows us with the power to impart, we will be able to carry the biosphere of this planet throughout the stellar system in which this solar system is embedded and life has this atemporal sense of itself. The reason it tolerates the risk that we represent is because it is gambling on the hope that we represent. And the way to get in aligned with that and to get in resonance with it is to clear the noise from the circuitry of communication. And the way you clear the noise from the circuitry of communication is by backing out of the garbage of profane culture 
reductionism, linearity, all of these things, and uh, abandoning the fall into history and returning to the garden. If we each do it, it will be feat accompli for the collectivity. If we all sit around waiting for it to come in the form of uh, benevolent extraterrestrials or a religious conversion on the part of Reagan and Gorbachev, we will all go to hell in a handbasket together. So that is the stunningly central import of the botanical hallucinogens in the planetary ecosystem. And that is this evening's formal presentation as well. Thank you very much. As I understand it, there is tea and coffee downstairs. Let's take a 10-minute break, and then I will entertain vigorous and even hostile questioning <laughs> by the audience. And here is the various sorts of propaganda that I mentioned earlier. Thank you very much.